Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text this morning before us from the book of Lamentations of Jeremiah, we read from the third chapter beginning of the 22nd verse. Because of, the, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope that him who offers his cheek to one who would strike him, that, and let him be filled with disgrace. For men are not cast off forever by the Lord. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. This is God's word. Dear friends in Christ, the Book of Lamentations is an interesting book of the Bible for a number of reasons. First of all, the word Lamentations means a, a, a series of human, or of, human, of funeral songs and hymns. Jeremiah is lamenting over the destruction of Jerusalem. He saw in all his glory and now the destruction and the utter ruin of Jerusalem. And so the first two chapters and the last two chapters and, and most of the third chapter as well relate to this agony and this sorrow that he is, is witnessing and sensing and, and just seeing all around him. And then in the middle comes the passages that are our text this morning. Also interesting is a good example of the acrostic poetry of the Hebrews. There are 22 verses in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 4, and chapter 5. And there are 66 verses in chapter 3. The 22 verses, each verse starts with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And second chapter the same way, fourth chapter the same way, fifth chapter the same way. The third chapter, every third verse starts with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it goes from, as we would in English, from A to Z in those verses there. So interesting in that way, and then interesting in the content as well. And Jeremiah, in the midst of his, because of this book, he's also referred to as the weeping prophet, who is weeping over the city of Jerusalem and such, and it comes out in his words. And it's, it's in a way, we look at that and we say, Lamentations is a kind of a depressing chapter of the Bible, but the middle part here, as I said, with our text this morning, is really very refreshing because there is so much content in these verses that are before us, more than any one sermon could contain. Just He begins, as he is wailing, if you will, crying over the city of Jerusalem, he says, the Lord's compassions and his mercies are new every morning. One of the things that he experienced about his Lord and his faithful God that he worshipped and served was that God is always with him. When we think of his mercies being new for us every morning, so often we think of God's blessings and his, his mercies and his grace in things that we can see where my life has been improved in some way or some joy has been brought into my life by some example of something happening. We fail to admit and to understand that so many times his blessings are those things that we just take for granted. You got up this morning and if you've been battling a bug maybe it was unique for you to get up this morning and be feeling healthy again but there are so many days we just get up and we just get going all we're tired we gotta stretch and get the kinks out and everything to get the day going but nevertheless you know we have our health. There's food to eat, there's coffee to drink, there's a home that we have. We didn't get a phone call in the middle of the night of some terrible tragedy that happened. The fire alarm didn't go off. Um, there's so many things. Every day is a new day of God's grace. And the thing is, as I get older, as I get older, the, the Lord's blessings never get old. I begin to appreciate things in a different way, a different, you know, different frame of mind as we get older. But yet, it's, it's the same thing. It's like um, if you take water, and if you gather it for your drinking water, and you let it sit for a month, it gets stale. You let a cup of water in the refrigerator for a couple weeks, it gets tasting like the refrigerator, and it just it's old, and you have to throw it out. But you go to the faucet, and you pour some fresh in. 
That's the Lord's blessings. They're poured out fresh to us every morning. They don't get stale. And then I, I think of the magnitude of my sin. Every day I can come to the Lord and confess my sin and be reassured of his forgiving love. His compassion never fails or never quits or never ends. And so I begin to appreciate all the more how my Lord is such a faithful watcher and keeper of my soul and of my life and of my well-being. And so we have to admit with the prophet Jeremiah, although there are obstacles in our lives, there are difficulties in our lives, but yet he never fails to be with me. He never fails to comfort me and to reassure me. He never fails to take my eyes off the things that I am going through and focus them on much greater things, the joy and the bliss of salvation that he offers to us. And so we admit with Jeremiah, yes, indeed, your mercies are new to us every day. He also goes on to say, we ought to bear the yoke in our youth when we are young. And so much can be said about that phrase. It is good for us when we are young to learn certain things. To learn a discipline in our life. To learn a, a respect for, not only for God, but for the people that God has placed over us, our earthly leaders, especially in the home, our parents, to, to learn to, to cope with that and to understand that I need to deal with matters of my temper and my rage in a way in which that is pleasing to God and that God would, would want me to be doing. And it's through obstacles and difficulties in my young life that trains me in my older life. It is through difficulties that I struggle through and deal with that helps me as I mature in my life because that which I've learned when I was young, I put into practice as I'm older. And one of the things that I learned when I was young is that I need to be patient and listen to God more. I need to be attentive to his word. We, when we're young, we think we've got the world by the tail and everything is grand and all this adventure and all this excitement of everything that's going to happen to me in my life. We don't learn at that point to listen to our Lord, to let him guide us and to help us through each and every situation. And it's sometimes through struggles. Sometimes those struggles is I don't have all the things I want. Good. I don't have all the money I want to buy all the things I want. Good. My friends have more than I do, and I wish I could have those things, but I don't. Mom and dad won't buy for me. Good. Learn to appreciate the things you have. Learn to appreciate that I just need to at some time just give thanks for the little things in life. You know, we just went through Christmas season. And I'm sure you have had an opportunity to open gifts with family. Ask your grandparents what they got for Christmas. You might be interested to hear about that when a pair of gloves was the main gift and they were so thrilled to get them. Or a book. Or something just of such a small nature and that they were excited, they were thrilled by that. Now it's like if you don't have all these different things, we aren't learning anything through that. We learn through adversities. Adversity becomes a very good school teacher. It helps me to be able to cope with things because as I get older, I begin to realize, yeah, I can't have all the things I want. And do I get frustrated or do I appreciate the things that I do have? When I'm young and I learn to discipline myself, I, I learn to just sit back and to let God control things. Oh, how much that comes in handy when we get older. When we start losing ability to do certain things when we're not as sharp anymore and our thinking isn't quite as sharp and our hearing isn't quite as sharp. Because when we were young, we disciplined and learned discipline, and we learned to, to suffer and to endure things. How much greater that helps when we were older. Teach a child when they're young, and they'll walk in their ways when they're, when they're old. You know, another way of saying that is bring a child to the Lord when he or she is young. And the chances are very much greater that they will stay with the Lord when they're old. And so the thought of bearing the yoke when we're young, no one likes the thought of adversity, health issues, I didn't make the team, I didn't get picked for this group, I didn't get to do that, my friends don't like me, and so on. 
Um, learning to deal with discipline or di with, with um, things that go wrong are very good for us when we get older. They're good for us then, but we don't appreciate it. All these things are, are, are healing for the soul. And we, and we don't always understand that when we're young. Jeremiah is pointing that out to us. It's a good thing. It's a blessed thing. He also said it's good to take time to be with your Lord. And perhaps most of us are guilty of that, and that is not spending enough quiet time with our Lord. One of the truths of life that's hard to get through to individuals is um, we don't know ourselves as well as we think we do. We first of all find it out when we get married. Then we're told what we're really like and what we're, our characteristics are and such like that. And sometimes that's a, a painful thing to hear, but it's quite accurate probably because I don't see myself for who I am. And that's where the quiet times of the Lord come in very handy where we can pause and just have that time where we can meditate upon God's Word and God tells us who we are, what we are. He shows us Himself, He shows us ourself in light of His eyes. We see that we aren't the characters that we think we are. He humbles us with His Word and it draws attention and brings us closer to Him. So time spent with the Lord to meditate upon His Word is time well spent. To meditate upon, you know, just as I look at the Word, I look through the examples of the pages of Scripture where God was with His faithful people and He took them through one trial and one adversity and He brought them safely through. And people who would never even see the day of the Lord's coming here to live on earth and to die on Calvary's cross of the Old Testament people. And He showed them and they trusted in Him. And we, we look at them, we read and we contemplate the things that they went through. And we find very quickly as we study and, and meditate upon the scriptures that I see myself in those situations. I see myself hurting. I see myself lonely. I see myself depressed. I see myself with the chasing after the vanities of this life that never fully satisfy. And I'm always seeming looking for something. And I'm, I can't find peace because... We haven't spent enough time with our Lord. We haven't spent enough time listening to Him. And so when, when Jeremiah says, you know, take time, separate yourselves to the Lord, sit alone in silence, let us bury our face, wait upon the Lord, for the salvation of the Lord is good. And so that's what we do. We take time and we pause, just by ourselves, you know, there's way, way, way too much of this herd mentality of people out in the society today. All of a sudden, we're marching down the street protesting this and protesting that and living in paper huts and thinking that, you know, we're part of some grand movement that's never been seen before in the world, that we're doing some really great justice and, and wonderful thing. Um, think for yourself for a moment. Don't let the group think for you. Sit alone with God's word, let him talk to you, and then make your judgments. Don't be seeking to do what everyone else is doing. And that's what Jeremiah is trying to say to us in our text this morning. And when you spend time with the Lord, then you begin to see things as they are. He opens your eyes and he opens your understanding. And how refreshing that is to see things as the Lord sees things to see my life as the Lord sees my life. Then I realize, and I can only do is cry out, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. Take away my guilt. Take away all these things that, that just are heavy weights upon me. And grant me your peace. And that's exactly what he does. It is good to bear the yoke when we are young. It is good to separate ourselves from time to time, to pause and to have personal time of meditation upon God's Word and let Him speak to us through that Word. It's good to, to prayerfully consider the things that the Lord has done, and it's, prayerfully, and it's good to prayerfully consider my own life in light of God's Word. Because then I see my worth, that Jesus would come to earth, live and die for me, to pay for my sins, all because He loved me. 
Your compassions are new every morning, Lord. Compassions, in this sense, mean something that is done out of a deep and sincere love for that person who it's being done for. Lord is doing this for us out of his deep and passionate love for each one of us. And we see that, and we understand that when we take time to listen to him, and when we take time to meditate upon his word, and when we take time to take things to the Lord in prayer, then he comforts. And then all the things going on around, and you look at this text, right in the middle of this text, or right in the middle of all the anguish and the agony of what's happened to Jerusalem, of what's going to happen to God's people in the future, and here is Jeremiah saying, I have come to understand, Lord, you will bless and you will continue to guard and keep your people. Although you afflict and although you punish for a day, yet your mercies are new and last forever. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.